All right, my baking beauties. We're going to tackle something that people don't like to tackle. It's called pie crust. Now, I bought pie crust from the store, and it does taste like boot leather. Pie crusts are not that difficult to make. I like to make them in big batches because then I've got lots of pie crust on hand. So let's start off with our ingredients. We're going to take away the mystery that is pie crust. Now, some people use butter. My mother used lard. I could live on her pie crust. They're amazing. But I use Crisco sticks. So what I've got in my bowl here is four cups of flour, a teaspoon of salt. What you're going to do is take one and a half cups of Crisco sticks. It can be butter flavored, and I don't really care for the butter flavored. It doesn't matter. Crisco sticks. Here's my half cup. Now it says cut it into little itty bits. You don't have to do that. Here's the one cup. Stick, oh goodness. To that, I'm going to add three teaspoons of sugar. I like to use super fine because it just seems to mix in better. Okay, you're going to take, oops, I just about forgot. Hello. I like to add one generous teaspoon of baking powder. Kind of lifts the dough, gives it a little bit more of a flaky texture. Okily dokily. Now what you're going to do is take a pastry cutter. If you don't have one, you can use um, forks, two forks going across, but I love this pastry cutter. And you're just going to cut into the Crisco sticks. Now, the difference between a great pie crust and a pie crust that's as stiff as a plate is over mixing. And we're going to go over that once we add our wet ingredients to the dry. Okay, once you have your dough base kind of in a crumbly texture, you can see how it just crumbles. Here's a footnote. You want your Crisco sticks to be really cold. Sometimes I stick them in the freezer for about 10, 15 minutes before I add them to the flour because you want it to stay in chunks. That's what gives it the nice flaky layers. Okay, so we've got our Crisco and all that flour mixed in together. Make a well in the center. Take two eggs, room temp, well, actually these two should be chilled. I just lied to you. I lied, people. Two eggs from the refrigerator. Add about a teaspoon and a half of an acid, or about two teaspoons, just about two teaspoons of either lemon juice, that's lemon juice, or you can use white vinegar, and you're going to mix it in with your eggs. Just give that a light little beat like that. I don't know what the magic of adding the acid to it does, but my mother always added vinegar, and trust me, it turns out to be dynamo. Now we've got it incorporated like that. Mixed in nicely. Let's pour it into the well in the center. Set that to the side. Then add, start off by adding what I have here is ice water. Very cold. Let's add about, let's do about four tablespoons of ice cold water. Take a spatula and just start bringing it in towards your wet ingredients. Just bring it in. Bring it in. We're still not touching it with our hands, which is great because our hands are warm and the last thing we need is to heat up the shortening in this. You want it crumbly. Crumbly. Okay. Now if it looks like it's too dry to you, which it's looking a little dry. Make another well. 
drizzle in a little bit of ice cold water. Bring that into the center. Still not over mixing. Maybe give it a couple of turns. I'm going to keep the cameras rolling for this because I really want you to see what the texture should look like. I'm going to add just a little spritz of some more water here. Because you want the dough to stick nicely together, but not be sloppy. You don't want it to be soupy. So this is where you get your hand involved. Because you want to get that dough mixed in. Whoops. Spill. Throw back in. Mm. Still a little dry. Ice water. Hold on, Mr. Ice Cube. Don't get crazy. Fold that in. There's no beaters involved. There's not a whole lot of mixing. I mean, this gets a little unpleasant. But I can feel that my dough is nice and chilled. So that's good. That's what we want, darling. Okay. Now. Chilled pie crust is a must. That rhymes. Chilled pie crust is a must. So, what you can do, this is a big batch. This will make a lot of crusts. Great thing about this, put it in your deep freeze, wrap it up, put it in your deep freeze. You can take it out, take a big knife, cut off a slice. If you want a single crust pie, you're good to go. If you want to make some tarts, good to go. You've got it in your freezer. Okay. What you can do is... I'm going to touch some things here. It's my house. I can get it gooby. Lay out some saran wrap. Take your beautiful dough. Flop it in that saran. Pull it out. Oops. I have some saran wrap that's trying to run away. Wrap it up like this. Put it in your fridge for about 20 to 30 minutes. You want it nice and firm. If you don't want to use it now, put it in a Ziploc bag, fire it into your deep freeze, and it'll keep for, I don't know, a couple of months in a deep freeze. In a fridge, it'll keep for about a week to two weeks, but you can throw it in your deep freeze. But let's chill it. We're going to come back, and I'm going to show you how to roll it out because that is important. And I'm going to make some tarts. Okay, so we have our chilled pastry. What I'm going to do is take a very sharp knife and cut off some of the pastry rather than tear it. And you know what? Put this back in the fridge. It's best to keep it chilled. Ah, I'm out of room. I'm out of room. Okay. So you have your board floured and you want it a nice broad space because the key is with rolling out this pastry is you want to roll it thin. Now don't muckety muck with it too much. Get a little on the bottom, a little flour on the top and have flour at the ready. Definitely. Okay. Take your rolling pin. Start working it if you need to kind of Make it come together. Just make it come together. Make it your make it your own. Love it like a baby. Keep rolling it. Turning it. I know this looks like a pain in the rear, but trust me, you do not want your pastry to stick to your counter. And having it chilled, ooh, having it chilled 
is going to help you do that. Get my flower going here. Come here, baby. Sprinkle. Not too much. Somewhere around. Dust. Work with it while it's chilled. Now, there's nothing worse than really, really thick pie crust. So don't be afraid if it looks kind of thin and frail because you can pinch it together when you put it in your pie shell or when you put it in your muffin tins for tarts, which is what I'm going to do. I've got my butter tart filling here. Look at that, nice and thin. Go in different directions. A little light dusting for good measure. Okay, get them nice and thin. Take your cookie cutter, dust a little flour on it, and start cutting out your rounds. Now, like I said, I'm doing tarts, okay? I'm doing little tarts. You're going to put them in there. You know what? I need something bigger. I don't like that. We're going to go a little bigger. I'm going to take this glass bowl that I used earlier. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Because I really want this to come up on the sides of my tarts. See, you know, that's the thing with baking. You start with one idea. It's not working. Roll with something else. There we go. That's much better. Because I want to fill these up real nice. Okay. So you're going to do that with the rounds. And just push them in real gently. If one of them breaks, don't sweat it, just kind of squeeze it together. Okay, so you want to fill up about um, a dozen of these, and then you're going to add your filling and bake. But you see how little I have messed with the dough. That's what you want. Very little work done to the dough. That way it will always come out flaky and nice. And like I said, the leftover pastry that you have, wrap it up in some saran wrap, put it in a Ziploc bag, and put it in the freezer. So whenever you need it for a pie crust, you just roll it out and it's ready to go. It's that simple. If you have any questions, email me on my website, foreigntreaties.com, and we'll try and troubleshoot to make it so it's light and flaky and tasty. And good luck with your baking.